Hey, we be jamming coming in, and we're going to jam on the way out tonight. But in the meantime, I think you're in for a fine, fine time with my friend Claudio Rosano. Listen, whether you're down the street, around the corner, across America, or somewhere around this great big planet, thank you for taking the time to tune in and being with us tonight. However you contact people, hollering at them over the fence, uh, running them down on the street, whatever device you contact people with, contact them and tell them that we are live here on the George Espinlob Show. It's been a long, long time. And like the song says, I took the long way home. (laughs) But I'm back. And I thank everybody for their prayers. Thank you for your support. And we're going to have us a good time tonight. To be eligible for the book, type in the comment section. Hashtag book. I'm rustier than an old gate post out here flapping around tonight. But uh, we're live. We're live. So you get (laughs) the warts and uh, the bleeps and the bloops. And you can watch Espinola blow something up because every program I blow something up. Uh, Hopefully we'll get it. We'll get it right tonight. Let's see who we got here. There is my friend Teresa, all the way from down there in Texas, uh, of all places. And then, uh, well, there's the missus. I better behave myself because she'll give me a, a, a beating when it's done. And then there's Jamie from up there in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Uh, and so, listen, come on in. Grab people, tell them to come on in, and we'll have us a wonderful time tonight. Let me get this off of here and get back over here. Uh, I say this often. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends, Romans, and countrymen, lend me both of your ears because we're going to fill your ears tonight with good things, exciting things, wonderful things. And we have as our guest Claudio Rosano out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, my friend. And trust me, when I was going through my hard times here the last seven or eight months, Claudio always found a way to contact me, just check in with me, find out how I was doing. And I appreciated that so very, very much. You also hear me say a lot on the programs, whether it's on the radio or here. uh, I always say if you can hear a man or a woman's heartbeat, then you know they're real. This man is real because when he talks, you can hear his heartbeat. He's got a passion. He's got a passion for the things he does. He has a passion for the people that's around him. He's got a passion for life. Uh, He's just filled with, with passion. And he comes with a long, long, long resume. My, oh, my. Uh, You just wonder how a fella can do all that much in such a short period of time. But, Claudio, it's good to have you, buddy. George, it's it's my honor. It's a thrill, and I'm so glad that you're back in that seat and doing your thing. You look great, and uh, thank God that you're feeling much better. And I do feel better. My. That's great. That's great. I was like a, a, a cat on a hot tin roof all <laughs> day today, and uh, you act like I've never done this thing before, but right. uh, uh, I guess what if, if we ever lose that feeling, Claudio, we better... Uh, put it in our wall locker and walk away, right? I don't think you're going to lose it. You, you have passion, and a lot of fans are glad that you're back, and, and, and I know I certainly am. We're going to start with putting that up there. That is Claudio's website, and you can go there, ClaudioRosano.com, and you can listen to his podcast weekly. You've had quite a slew of people on your podcast. I have, and uh, I've been lucky. You know, we talked off the air about how things have happened in life, and and some of the guests that I've had on, like uh, uh, Jerry Cooney and Mario Andretti, of Vince Ferragamo, uh, Ken Griffey Sr., guys that I grew up, Rocky Blyer, guys I grew up watching and idolizing, and I've become friends with some of them, uh, Donnie Lalonde and Vinnie Paz, uh, and, and I remember I was talking to Jerry Cooney. I was interviewing him in my home office and the home I live in is a home I 
grew up in. I've never left this house. So that was my old bedroom, right? So that room that I'm interviewing him in, I remember watching his big fight against Ken Norton when he blew him out in 54 seconds, right? Then the room that I'm in now, I was playing and I can just see, you know, maybe seven feet away where my mom in 1969, I was five years old, but I still remember my mom screaming, Andretti and Vincenzo, Andretti and Vincenzo. She said in Italian, Andretti won, Andretti won the 1969 500. And here I am interviewing him. So it, it's, it's, it's quite a circle, and, and I, I'm very grateful for sure. I'm like you, Claudio. I've met some incredible people. Uh, just, and and not, only, not only met them, interviewed them, spoke with them, but became friends with them. Right. And I think that, that's what makes all the difference in the world. Uh, when it becomes more than just an interview, more than, more than just a program, but it becomes two people getting entwined uh, and walking down the same path, and you can stay in, stay in check with somebody and, and they with you. Uh, I think that's what makes it all worthwhile, don't you? It, it does, and it, it's still, you know, I tell a story. I remember in, I think, 2005 or six, um, myself, John Candelaria, um, uh, Jim Rooker, some other former Pirates and Steelers, Grant Jackson, Robin Cole, we were going to New Mexico. Elroy Face, I believe, was on the, on the uh, plane as well. We were going to New Mexico for a golf tournament, and I'm, I'm just – watching. I said, what am I doing here? Even though I knew I've known these guys for years, it's still kind of, even, you know, Jerry Cooney was on my boxing show the other day and I'm still, I'm talking to him. It's like, what am I doing with this guy? You know, cause I still sometimes see myself as that eight year old kid. And, and, um, and, and it's been quite a life. And, and real quick, if you don't mind me sharing a quick story, my, my, my first game that I ever went to was August 19th, 1973. I was eight years old. My uncle used to work at three river stadium. So that day, the starting pitcher was Jim Rooker. Jim and I became very good friends, and we play in celebrity golf events together. He's done some scouting for me. The first baseman was Al Oliver. Al and I are friends, and we were inducted into a Hall of Fame together in 2014. The second baseman was Rennie Stennett. Unfortunately, Rennie passed a couple years ago. Wonderful man, a friend. He invited me to the 79 Pirate Reunion. And the left fielder was Willie Stargell. I won a, a Willie Stargell Lifetime Achievement Award. And the opposing pitcher was Juan Marichal, and I signed his nephew to a pro contract. Now, if you'd have told me back then, hey, little eight-year-old kid, come here, these things are going to happen to you in life. I said, ah, you're crazy. But they did, you know, and so that's why I tell kids all the time, things can happen in life uh, because they've happened for me. Yeah, I was going to say, in your wildest dreams, I think you already said it, but in your wildest dreams, yeah. you never, never expect it. Anything no, like this? No, not at all. But no. uh, it's it's fun, you know. All the hard work pays off. All the rejections, all the all the hell that you go through professionally, um, you know, when these things happen and you meet these wonderful people, and and yeah, you look up to them. But I've been lucky that they're good people as well. If they weren't good people, I don't care how uh, good they can play, throw, hit, shoot a basketball. It doesn't matter. They are coach. They have to be good people. And I've been so fortunate. Those people I just mentioned are great people. And uh, I've, I've met a bunch of them. So um, I've been lucky for sure. Hey, if you're watching, uh, by the way, of uh, YouTube, let me put this up here real quick. Uh, if you're watching, by the way, of YouTube, hit that little subscribe, do flicky, the bell, and the thumbs up, uh, and so much for that. But anyhow. Uh, Claudio, you, you also do scouting and you already mentioned that you, you would sign someone to a contract. Uh, and we're, we're going to have Claudio on several times because we're going to talk about each one of these, these things that he does, but I've, I've got a, I've got a question for you, Claudio. And, and I've had this question since August. I would have called you on the telephone, but I couldn't hear nobody, so I couldn't talk to people <laughs> on the telephone. But look, I'm a big fan of I call it little guys baseball. You know, the little league, the pony league, so on and so forth. And I love to watch the World Series in Williamsport. 
Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Those kids, that those kids play like major leaguers. I mean, they're, they're, you just can't. There's words won't describe it. But I was sitting there watching, and I was thinking, I've got to find out from Claudio. How soon, Claudio, do you guys put eyeballs on kids? Great question, which I've never been asked before. Um, I'd say you can start for me, for me. Some people say juniors in high school. I would say seniors in high school. Um, but let's not go crazy. Keep an eye on him. Put a check mark on him, whatever. Uh, circle around him and then follow him. Um, it's, it's hard. See, I, what I like to do is if somebody has, I'll, I'll give you a better example. In boxing, if, if I told you that, um, a guy had 45 wins and 10 losses. You say, eh, whatever, you know. But if I told you another guy had like 82 wins and only like two losses, you'd say, wow. But the guy who had the 45 wins and 10 losses was Evander Holyfield, who fought the best of the best. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other guy, I won't mention his name, he was a champion. But out of all of those fighters, he only fought one recognizable name. So to me, the guy who had 45 wins and 10 losses is a much more um, uh, bigger star, bigger uh, player for me. Now, in baseball, you'll see a guy hitting 500, 575, whatever. But who did he do it against? Right. Okay. In high school, not, not, not in Texas or Florida, California so much, but maybe in, in the cold weather states and East, you may only – a pitcher – may only, and I'm not trying to be negative here, but he, he's not going to face a full great lineup. So, so you can see his speed and all that kind of stuff and the movement on his pitches, but how's he going to react whenever he faces a good lineup and they hit his best pitches? So for me, I will see a high school player, a senior, see how he behaves, see how he reacts to a punch, um, and then keep an eye on, eye on him throughout his uh, college career. I am skeptical. This is just me on drafting a high school player. Number one, you're leaving home for the first time. Okay. It's a big transition, big transition. You're meeting from people from all over the world. You're not in your comfort zone. Okay. How's that going to affect you? There's a maturity level, not just physically, but, but uh, mentally. So I like the guys who are junior seniors in college, uh, that can do it because again, baseball is very difficult. It's a lot of games, a lot of traveling and how are you going to handle it? So to answer your question, I would say most scouts start looking in the junior area time frame, And obviously as they continue to grow, they check their numbers, their physical maturity, mental maturity. Um, and, and I'm the same way, but I would not, you know, I like to sign somebody who's a little bit older and I've signed older guys who didn't make it too. OK, but for me personally, I would feel a little bit better sending a, a professional organization, somebody who was, um, you know, uh, in junior, senior after they graduate uh, or after they graduate uh, college or, of course, a released uh, professional player. And we're going to do a whole segment on that uh, when we have Claudio back. The other thing. uh I just lost. There it is. The boxing authorities <laughs> can be seen on Channel Box WBC Live, and there's there's a website that you can watch that on too, Claudio. Those are the best. Uh, well, um, there's there's a YouTube which our co-host, uh, one of our guys, Luther Dupree Jr., has. It's uh, PGH Big Dog, PGH Big Dog on YouTube, and you'll see a lot of the shows there, okay. and, and that's a great show. I have two of the best partners uh, with Luther Dupree Jr. on my left, smoking Jim Frazier on my right. And, and I, I'm going to say this. I watch a lot of boxing shows, but we are the best ones. We're, and I lead off the show saying it's welcome to the boxing authorities, always informative, always entertaining. And we are. 
Uh, we, we, we get to the point and, and it's entertaining. We talk about a variety of different things. We'll talk about upcoming fights, fights that happened last week, fights that happened 50 years ago. We have great guests on, as I mentioned, Jerry Cooney. We've had uh, champion Mike Weaver, Diane Alana. We've had some great guests. Uh, Mauricio Suleiman, the president of the WBC. So um, it's just a fun show to do. And those two guys are just, they're wonderful people and they just make it a lot of fun. It's uh it's a wonderful, wonderful world. <laughs> it is. And it's better when you have people like that around you, for sure. And then Claudio does this. Steel City Sports World. With Luther Dupree and Smoking Jim. We do, uh, we'll cover some national things, but uh, obviously a very heavy uh, Pittsburgh uh, flavor to that. We've been doing that. I've been doing that since uh, 2007. Luther's been doing it for like 18 years. So we've been at it for quite a while. Yeah. And then there's this. That just came up uh, a few months ago. I think, what is this, March? I think sometime in uh, last year, a guy named Glenn Anderson uh, asked me to do this show. It's once a month. I hire, I, I interview a lot of great basketball people in the Pennsylvania area, and it's a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm enjoying that too. And then <laughs> this is something rather new, right? Well, the I, I've been doing some speaking, um, but this is going to be more consistent. There's a company which I'll announce soon is going to be is going to hire me to do more consistent speaking, representing the company to different companies they work with in some high schools. And I really can't wait to do that. That's going to be a, a full schedule doing that. And I love doing that because I do Jim Valvano, uh, whose 30 year anniversary of his wonderful speech, the Don't Give Up speech. Uh, a few days ago, his fa he was a friend of mine. He used to say his favorite word in English dictionary is the word impact. He had so much impact on zillions, including me. So I'd like to share my stories and experiences, good and bad, and, and have impact on people. And the hitting camps, uh, just talking to somebody yesterday, looks like I'm going to be doing one in uh, Massachusetts. And, uh, I, and coaches from all over, I, I'll do wherever. Um, and at the risk of sounding you know, funny about it, I'm really, really, really good at teaching hitting. Um, I will put up my ability to, to recognize a hole and fix it uh, with anybody out there. And uh, I, I have a passion for that. I enjoy that very much. And let me find it. Yeah, that's a new show. Yeah, uh, it's a brand new, it's a radio show here in Pittsburgh, but you also can check out the show on that website. A guy named Steve Mancini brought me along. We're going to be interviewing uh, Italian-Americans from the Pittsburgh area that, were, that are successful in business, medical, entertainment, and sports. But we're also going to interview some well-known names outside of the Pittsburgh area. Um, some of them have already been on my show, uh, my, my podcast. We're going to bring them on to the Italian Impact Weekly. And um, so it's a brand, I think we just finished our sixth show and uh, really excited about it. And, and I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. And and what makes it fun is, again, the people that you work with, Luther Dupree Jr., Smoking Joe Frazier, Steve Mancini. And I'm, I'm blessed to, to call them friends and to work on these shows and to entertain people because, you know, everybody is under so much pressure in life. And when you can, you know, listen to one of our shows for an hour or you know, 45 minutes, whatever, and be entertained. It just fixes your mood up and, and uh, maybe either hopefully inspires you or makes you laugh or gives you some thought or some knowledge. Jim Valvano used to say, if you can laugh, cry and think every day, that's a heck of a day. So hopefully I, with these shows, I can, uh, we can do that. And here's a question for you, my man. Yes, sir. When do you <laughs> sleep? <laughs> That's why I look terrible. I don't sleep much. Um, you know what? Uh, I don't waste time because I get that question a lot. How do you do all these things? Coach, scout, TV, podcast, radio, uh, hitting training, I own a landscaping business, writing the book, speaking, all that stuff. I don't waste time. And I spend, an, I spend a, a ton of time with my family, my wife and daughter, uh, who I, I just enjoy being with them the most. Um, but in order to be with them and take care of them, you have to do the things that you have to do, you know, work wise. And I'm blessed to be doing those things and call them work. But, um, you know, I, I, I'd say I go to bed, actually fall asleep around 1230, you know, something like that. And I wake up at six, 
seven, maybe seven. I doubt it. Not even seven, about six, 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 thirty. And I just hit the ground running and I'm excited about the things I do. And, um, you know, maybe sneak in a nap in the day, about 10 minutes, maybe. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, I, I enjoy it. I, I want to get right back at it. I'm so grateful that I'm doing these things because it was always a goal and it was a long shot. So I'm going to, you know, again, back to Jim Valvano, he used to say, when, when it's my time to go, I want my dance card full, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's the way I want to do. I want to do as much as I can. And I never feel like I've done enough. You know, uh, I mentioned Mario Andretti, his quote is, if you have everything under control, you're not going fast enough. Or Dan Marino says, you can do more. You can always do more. And I, you know, I, I, I look at, some of the things that I've done and I said, well, that's nice. And I got some awards and things like that and some game balls, some trophies, but I think I can do more. And, um, you know, Greg, Greg Norman, the golfer and successful businessman, you know, he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. He said he's only accomplished maybe 20 or 30% of what he can accomplish. And I kind of feel that way. I've only accomplished maybe, you know, 20, 25% of what I feel I can accomplish. So I, I keep at it. Yeah. And I, I just told someone this the other day, <clears throat> I'm 74 and a half years old, uh, <laughs> but I still have goals, aspirations. Yeah. Uh, I, I was talking to my son last night and he's, he's 53, soon to be 54. We was talking on telephone and we were talking about the funny farm, uh, uh, radio studio and, and, uh, the live streams and stuff. And, uh, mom said, uh, uh, his name's Derby. Mom said, he's like a kid, Derb. He's like a kid. And, That's right. uh, yeah, I, you know, it, besides that, I don't want to grow up. I've seen some of them adults and they scare me. <laughs> my, my mom used to call some people a piece of meat with eyes. Like they just <laughs> exist, you know? <laughs> And I never want to do that. And I just want to accomplish as much as I can and hopefully be an inspiration to people, I hope, and obviously inspire my daughter to just keep at it. I mean, not that the trick is to to enjoy what you're doing. Don't just brush over it. Enjoy what you're doing. But at the same time, go after more. You know, Chuck Noll, the Pittsburgh Steelers coach, after they won a Super Bowl, I think the second one. He, they said, well, what are your plans? Well, we got to go after another one, you know, and, and that's what makes life exciting. And, you know, it's it's the journey. Uh, Boom Boom Mancini likes to say it's the it's all about the journey. And, and it is. And now I enjoy the chase as long as I get to catch that carrot once in a while, you know, right, but right. Uh, it, it's it's fun. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of pressure. You know, it's their performance jobs. You have to win as a coach. You have to sign people. You have to train people and help them. You have to if you do a show, you have to be entertaining. If you speak, you hopefully impact some people. If you write a book, you, you know, hopefully it's it's good. Um, so it's not just you do them just for the heck of it. You want to you want to do them well and really impact people because so many people, starting with my mom and dad, have had impact in my life, such as yourself. You know, you, you're not you, you're happy with what you're doing, but you want to do more. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I love that. And I'm 58, and I still feel I have a you know quite a ways to go. My grandma used to say uh, when she's talking about a young man or young woman, she'd say. Uh, they they got some bringings up <laughs> and uh this man ladies and gentlemen and i don't say this out of flattery i say this because i mean th this man he he's had some bringing ups uh you know he had he had terrific parents that taught him uh work ethics and and uh morals and uh when you see claudio on screen and i've heard and seen so many people say this uh when you see him on screen if you would run into him off screen he'd be the same type of person uh, oh, i appreciate he, that he's always he's always asking about you asking about you and that and that says a lot of, about individuals we need more individuals like that claudio you've been the head baseball coach at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh for quite some time now. 18 wonderful years. And I, I by the way, I appreciate your kind words. Thank you. And, and my parents, uh, thank you as well. But um, I, I tell you what, what wonderful 
special people uh, I have to coach. And, and um, I've been invited to weddings and, and, and not just to see you, but I mean, I, unfortunately, one of my best friends, his mom, Vince, the Caplack family, Mrs. Caplack was wonderful, wonderful person. I was honored to give the eulogy and stuff like that. And when players um, call me and, and tell me that I haven't coached in years, I love you. It, last week, a young man, Morgan Dively, I just spoke with him a little bit. And as we hung up, coach, I love you. I appreciate you. And then my team now, now they, these guys are 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 years old. Just, you know, if I say too much about them, I, I get choked up. What a special group of people that I have, you know, I don't know what it is with me. I've been so blessed. I'm not going to say lucky, blessed right. that all my years of coaching, this is my 40th year as a coach um, to have just unbelievable people and their parents have been unbelievable with me too. Um, and how lucky am I, how blessed, how grateful am I to coach these great young men at CMU that, um, you know, they, they have a ton of schoolwork to do. They have, we have some obstacles to overcome as a team and they don't care. They just go right through the wall underneath it, side of it, over top of it, or they're so smart. They'll invent something to do, to make that wall disappear. Right. But uh, there's not a, there's not a team in the world I'd rather have than my guys. And I'm very proud to say that they're my guys. And, um, the way they the way they are with me, the way they treat me, um, which is one of the reasons why I wrote the book. There's a story in the book about a about a birthday party. Uh, it was on my birthday, of course, and the other team was fighting and arguing, and coach was cussing the players out, and the players are cussing the coach out. And on the other dugout, my players were they they gave me a, a birthday cookie, and um, it, but it, it, it's just been over and over and over again, and. Uh, and and the, sure, the championships are nice, but it's the championship people that I have. Boy, I'm lucky. This book, Lead from the Heart Up, Not the Neck Up. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in one of our conversations a while back or whenever, uh, is it, was this something that your mom said? Yeah. That's a hell of a picture too, isn't it? That's a pretty good picture. I like that picture. Yeah. Some lady said. Some lady said the book would have sold more if my picture wasn't on it. I disagree with that. I think it's a good picture, you know. But anyway, um, she said it's a little egotistical to put your picture. I said, nah, it's a good picture. But anyway, um, my mom used to say. Matter of fact, as I would leave uh, the the door here, she would always give me a hug and a kiss before a game, and she would say, um, you know, she's first of all she'd say, "Mostro coraggio, show them your courage." But she always used to always say, whenever you speak, speak from the heart up, not the neck up. In other words, don't be fake. You know, be passionate. Care about what you say. And uh, they used to say that about Roberto Clemente. They said he would order a cup of coffee with passion, right? Mm -hmm. But um, So I turned that phrase a little bit when I am coaching or leading, whatever. Uh, I, I, my players, I, I'm, they, they've, they've seen me cry. They've seen me be upset. They've seen me laugh. They see me be serious, funny, whatever. It's just whatever it is, I, it's from the heart up. But when I do that, they do it back. And Dick Vermeil, you know, the theme of the book, Dick Vermeil, who was also on my show, uh, Hall of Fame coach and Super Bowl winning coach, he said that your players won't care how much you know till they know how much you care. Yeah. And yeah. my players know that I care. And when you have 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old kids, okay, I'm 58. When I first started coaching, I was 18. Guys were 15, 16, 17. And now the gap's getting wider, right? And my daughter said, who's 21, she said, Daddy, I'm older than some of your players. But when, when you can get, and I'm not going to say, I'm not going to give myself all the credit by no means. But these guys, when they say things to me, you know, uh, it, it, it just knocks me over. And but I think they also know that that's the culture that I want. I want us to they, they know they can contact me at three in the morning. They know that when I say something to them, I care when I say goodbye to them. You know, we lost a couple of years ago. Our team was on a heck of a championship run. We won our conference. We're in Buffalo and we lost a playoff game three to two. It was a hell of a game. And I was in tears, but it wasn't because we lost. It was because I had to say goodbye to some very, very special people. 
And even though we keep in touch, you're not going to see them as much. So I just, I wrote the book because I want people to know that like Vince Lombardi, everybody's, oh, he was hard. He was gruff. Yeah. But those players to this day, when they talk about him, they get emotional mm -hmm. because he, they knew he loved them. He, they knew that whatever he said to them, it was for their own good professionally and personally. And he was always there for them. My guys know that now having said all that, having said all that, I've had some great teachers in high school and college, but I didn't, um, I didn't take advantage is the right word. I didn't listen. I, I didn't do my part. You know, I, my mind was always on baseball, right? These guys listen, they pay attention. They go through a wall for me. So I can be the greatest guy in the world, the greatest coach in the world. If they don't want to listen. And one quick story, uh, the, the championship team that I had for two years in a row, their senior year, I thought we were going to just blow everybody out of the water. Well, we got off to a slow start. And I remember telling them, I said, look, in order for us to make the playoffs, we're probably going to have to win about eight games in a row. One of the players said, geez, coach, how are we going to win eight games in a row? I said, the young boy asked the old man, how do you choose, achieve success in life, old man? The old man said, by eating an elephant. The young man said, how do you eat an elephant? The old man said, one bite at a time. Whenever we, excuse me, whenever we break the huddle, our team would say elephants. That's, I knew I had a special team. I knew it before. Other people may have laughed and stuff, you know, because usually you say win or you say your team name or whatever. Our guy said elephants. I said, man, I got to them. They, they listened. They took it to their heart. Now, we didn't win eight. We won six, I believe. But that's beside the point. Right. That's the type of people I have. And I just fell right into it at Carnegie Mellon. It's my 18th year. And just um, wonderful, wonderful people. Who, and, and, we win, and we win, too. I've, I've told people over the years that, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's, there's so many young people out there that need somebody. You know, everybody needs somebody sometime. Uh, no man is an island. Right. And I've, I've, I've told a lot of people, including my kids and other people, if you don't, influence those young people somebody or something else will right you know so and it all goes back with what what you just said it all goes back with what i said in the beginning of the show if you can hear a man's heartbeat <laughs> if you can hear a woman's heartbeat then you know they're for real and that makes all the difference in the world right. have you kept track or have any idea uh, how many weddings you went to? <laughs> well, I was in one, as I mentioned, uh, Vince Cap, like I was in his wedding. And um, again, I'm getting emotional because I, I, I tell you, I don't know how many, but a lot. But uh, last year, one of my current players, um, he's, uh, I believe, 21, 22 years old, um, I got an invitation in the, in, the, uh, in the mail and it was a wedding invitation. And I had no idea that this young man thought that much of me. And, and I got to be honest with you. And again, I, his name's Elijah. Uh, Elijah Nup. And, and um, it, it just really got to me. And, and going to his wedding and watching, he married a, a, a great girl, Cammie, beautiful wedding, wonderful families. And it just got to me that he thought that much of me to invite me. And um, it's it just, you know, again, you look at some awards and stuff and I look at them all the time and, and I, but there's a story behind each and every one of them or the game balls or the trophies. But when players are that way with you, I just got a text today from a young, from a young man that I coached back in 1995. We're going to, we're going to meet up and, um, you know, or for your birthday, they'll, they'll send you a note. And in my book, there's about 20 some odd players who, you know, wrote some nice things about me and uh, just, you know, again, championships are great and you want to win, obviously goes that saying, but when you can have those special people in your life, 
you know, and I give them the credit because I can, again, I can be the greatest guy in the world. If they don't want to reciprocate, if they don't want to let it soak in, if they don't want to do their part, it's like playing tennis. If I hit the ball and nobody hits it back, what, what is that? Yeah. But they hit it back and uh, just very grateful. Very special. That's one of those. Uh, that's one of those moments, Claudio, that as an eight year old, you never dreamed about. No, you, you, you don't, you know, um, like I said, when I uh, first start coaching, you know, you have your goals and dreams and, and uh, you kind of don't think about like these relationships. It isn't like I said, OK, I'm going to do this. They just kind of happen, you know. Right. And again, from the heart up, they're not fake. And my players know that there was one guy that I worked for that um, he wasn't very good with me. Uh, I was an assistant and he wasn't very good with me. And I never forget we were on a bus going to Florida. And I'm sitting, uh, where was I? He was sitting over there. I'm sitting over here. I remember it. And he says, so uh, how long have you been dating your girlfriend, which is my wife now? And I'm saying, the hell do you care? You don't even, you don't even talk to me. It was fake. You know, and I knew it was fake. Right. And I gave him, you know, whatever answer I gave him. But I just knew he never asked about anything. He barely talked to me. Okay. And now all of a sudden, you know, he was just, uh, you know, he was everything from the neck up. And and I can read it, you know, but my players know that I care and I know that they care. I mean, just again, just wonderful people, wonderful people. Now, Carnegie doesn't recruit like other colleges. Right. Is, is that right? Yeah. It's a different ball game there. Um, pardon the pun. We it's, it's basically an Ivy League school out of Pittsburgh. Incredibly it's hard to get in hard to stay in. it's a fantastic school you graduate from cmu you write your own ticket yeah. okay and i tell my guys the the order is family school baseball nobody can ever say i've gotten out of that lane ever <clears throat> and they have they you know i i don't john calipari another friend of mine university of kentucky head basketball coach unbelievable coach even a 10 times better person but it's funny, I know all these Italian guys. But anyway, on his wall in his office, he says, Coach your team. I'm talking my team. I, I don't, everybody else has their own thing. We can't practice every day. We can't roll out of campus and practice from three to five to go recruit. You know, I get scouts telling me, Hey, I got a guy, he's six foot three, batting 520. You know, it, it's, it's just a different world. But I knew going into it, it was like that. Some, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes we might not practice maybe once in a week. Yeah. You know, I, I remember last year in Florida, it was on my YouTube channel. I told the guys, we haven't been able to practice. We haven't thrown a ball. We haven't hit one. We haven't fielded one. We haven't run. So what? So what? Go out and play. And we right. did well. Right. You know, um, would we like to practice more? Sure. But we can't because they're so pounded with school, which is – Important. That's what they're there for, right? Mm -hmm. And if they don't go to school and they come to practice, guess what? Their grades are going to suffer. They're not going to be able to play anyway. Right. And, you know, I hear some coaches, they won't say it to my face, but it's, oh, if I was over there, if uh, John didn't come to practice two times, I'd kick him out. Well, then you wouldn't have a team, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, I'm, George, I'm sure you've heard this saying that the game has passed coaches by. Oh, yeah. I don't know if the game passes people by or that people pass people by. Yeah. I've been it. coaching now since the eighties. All right. So that's a lot of decades. Right. But if, if people changed, uh, yes and no, everybody still wants treated with respect. Everybody still wants compliments. Everybody still wants to be understood. Everybody still wants uh, to be treated well. All right. But so I try to do those things. You know, I'm, I'm not some tough guy on them. When I have to be upset, I'm upset. When I have to smile, I smile. When I have to joke, I joke. When I have to cry, I cry. When it's hot out, you wear T-shirt and shorts. When it's cold, you wear a jacket. When it's raining, you put up an umbrella. You have to have a dial. My guys, Carnegie Mellon, they have to be <clears> – <throat> there's other considerations. There's other things we have to deal with, school-related, and, and it's very hard. So what kind of a coach would I be? I say, you, you miss practice, you're done. There's been guys who've missed practice all week due to school. They're going to start 
on 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 game day. That's just the way it is. And that and if somebody else doesn't agree with it, that's fine. This is my team. I coach my team. Yeah, I I I have a problem. Uh, this 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 thing called ego. Uh, it's it's like a nine hundred pound elephant in a closet. Sure. And it's it's prevalent everywhere, everywhere. Uh, I, I watch little. I watch it in Little League. Oh. Uh, some of these some of these coaches go ballistic like it's the seventh game of the World Series. You know what I'm saying? And there's there's multi million dollars on the line. I'm thinking, whoa, Jack, whoa, 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 whoa. You need to back up. This is a game, <laughs> and then these are kids. But it it carries on from from the little people's coaches all the way up into the professional ranks. And, it, and it's, I got to win no matter what the cost, no matter what, if I got to run over somebody, I run over somebody. If I, if I have to disrespect somebody, you know, and you've seen it all, Claudio, you, you, you've seen it in every walk of life, in every sport. Uh, this thing is all about life. And I like that approach that Carnegie Mellon has. Uh, I like that approach. It's tough to get in. It's tough to stay in. But like you said, if you make it through, you can write your own ticket. And, and, and you know, you hit it on the head. And, and and now it's it's a it's a balancing act. Okay. True. Now I still tell my team the Vince Lombardi uh, line: the greatest feeling in the world is to lie exhausted in victory. The second greatest feeling in the world is to lie exhausted in defeat. Pour it all. Pour it all. Jim Valvano used to say, when we're playing, the, this these 40 minutes are, this should be the most important 40 minutes of your life. But as soon as it's over, you have to realize how important it was. Right. Ray Mancini says it's a quick trip from the penthouse to the outhouse. And right. I know that, okay? I've been up and down. My career has been up. My life is up and down. Now, I want my guys, when they go out there to play, I, I do want them to just give me everything they get because winning does make it more fun. Yeah. And I wanted to change the culture at CMU, and we did. Okay, but but at the same time, why? I'm a big believer in having your cake and eat it too. Why can't we win? Why can't we work hard? Do well in school? Why can't we get along? Why can't we have fun? What kind of, you know, why does it have to be this or that? You know, why why does it have to be? Why do we have to choose? Why can't we do well in school, have a social life, and play baseball and win? Why, why can't I have a good relation with my players and then listen to me at the same time? There's right. been guys, you know, I, I, that I've coached that one minute, I'm, you know, you, you, you holler to them or holler at them about something. Two minutes later, they're giving you a hug or they're yeah. saying, thanks, coach, or whatever the case is. Right. Why? why you know, same with your kids. One minute you're mad at them. Next minute, you know, you're taking them for ice cream. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. But, um, you know, I remember when we when we won our, our first conference championship in 2015, and I'll never forget. I, it was weird because I could even the championship uh, that our team won when I was at another at another school, Penn State Beaver. Um, I watched the team celebrate. I didn't jump in, and that's fine when you do that. That that's that's you know people do what they do. I wanted to watch them. I just wanted to sit back and watch. Yeah. And even now, when when we win a big game, you know, an extra inning game, or we make a big comeback. You know, I'm the only idiot coach who tore a meniscus during the game because I'm very passionate. I mean, I walk. I, you know those those meters you put on you to see how many you walk? Somebody said, Coach, you pace like crazy. And, and I'll go three to five miles in a game just pacing, right? But that, you know, I've had energy, um, anxious energy, not nervous energy or intense. But I want my guys to enjoy you know, winning and, and the, the, the process and the achieving and the underdog that we don't have everything laid out for us, but we're winning anyway, that we go after it anyway. And, um, and you know what, I want these lessons to be learned so they can pull it out of their pocket in their life. Yeah. And the biggest compliment I can get is when a player that I coached either this year or 30 years ago, 40 years ago says, coach, I remember some of your quotes or I live by it, or, you know, the elephant one bite at a time, or whatever saying I come up with that my parents taught me, or I studied, or learned. 
And that's what makes all the difference, you know, that you had, they, they still have those things in their pocket and they utilize them. So, um, you know, it, it, but again, it's, it's a balancing act, you know, and you mentioned ego. I mean, we all have an ego. Sure. I want to win. And I, I like it whenever, you know, somebody says, Oh yeah, you, you, you guys done this. Done but at the end of the day, um, I, I'll say this, I'll put it to you this way in 2011, I think it was one of my best friends, uh, Eric Jackson, Lori, very successful attorney. And uh, I, we were going to the Rochester, New York boxing hall of fame on the way back. We get into a car accident. The car spun around five times, totaled the car. Nothing happened to either one of us. But when that car was spinning, George, it did. So wait a minute. This guy's a successful attorney. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. This guy coaches or scouts or does whatever. That car kept spinning. So right. again, you put things in perspective. Be proud of what you do. Be confident in what you do. Try to impact people. Do your thing. But don't act like an idiot. I cannot stand and I do not like people who think now I'm, I'm very confident. I told you 10 minutes ago about hitting. I can put I'm, I'm better than anybody, but that doesn't make me immune to death or or whatever. Or that doesn't make me better than you or as a person or I should treat you like garbage. Right. You know, uh, I don't like that in people. I'll tell you another quick thing. One time this one guy had a had a store that I would frequent and he had always introduced me to people. Oh, this guy's a coach, does this, that, and other thing. And I always appreciated it, flattered. Then one time, I also owned a landscape business. So one time he saw me, and I just was, you know, I had all kind of dirt grass on me. He treated me differently. I said, wait a minute. I'm the same guy that you were talking to earlier. You know, those guys that I mentioned, those athletes that I mentioned, who've had impact in my life, it didn't, it's not because of what they've done, how, how great they are and what they do. It's the type of people yeah. they are. You know, that's what, you know, gets to me. I, I, I want good people. And um, so I don't care how good of a boxer or baseball player you are. You have to be a good person. And then that's when you get me. So I try to be a good person. My dad always said, and you and I talked about this before. I, I mentioned it to you. He always said, you can be confident. But don't you dare be cocky. There you go. Uh, yeah. And Joe Espenlob just said it <laughs> and walked away. And, 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 you know, Claudio, like your players remember something that you said. He said it. He walked away. He said it one time. Yeah. He said it. He walked away. And here I am, you know, down the road a long ways. And that's always stuck with me. Yeah. And it's so true because – and I'll, I'll never forget too. A couple of years ago, uh, I was in Rhode Island for a boxing meeting, and this one lady, she said, "Claudio, we need to get you more confidence." I said, "Confidence has nothing to do with it. I'm very confident. I just don't act like an idiot about things, you know." And and there's people that um, that again, how can I say? Best way I can say it too. No, using another Italian guy. I deal with more people than Italian people. But the, the old former champ, Rocky Graziano, you know, when he won his championship against Tony Zale, I want to say in 50-something, 50 52, something like that, 53. But they had a ticker tape parade for him in New York. And his wife said, Rocky, look at this. Look look at the, oh, look at all these people, the ticker tape parades. The, the police who used to arrest you were cheering for you. And he said, Norma, he said, Yes. He said, and enjoy it and soak it in because one of these days, somebody's going to give me a good right, right here. And it's going to be all over, but that's okay. And he had his famous line because somebody up there likes me. Mm -hmm. And I try and thank you for the comment, uh, Jamie. I appreciate that. But, um, you know, life is so fragile. Life is so fragile. And I don't want, how many times have we met somebody who wants to be a big dog or tries to, uh, you know, who have hurt you. I, I, I don't want anybody when they leave my presence and I'm sure it's happened, I guess. I don't want somebody when they leave my presence, say, I'm glad I'm away from that guy. I can't stand him or he was arrogant or whatever. And I'm sure it's happened, you know? Um, but I, I just, uh, I, I'm, I don't want that, you know? And like I said, to be honest with you at the end of the day, 
you know, yes, you want to impact as many people as you can. I mentioned some people like a Jim Valvano, who unbelievable coach, but he's had so much impact on people in their lives through his cancer fund. How many lives has he saved? Right. And, 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 but, you know, unfortunately Jim passed, you know, life is fragile. So while we're here, try to be good. I know that's corny, but um, you don't have to be, you know, try to be big time or, and, and you know, the people who do that, the people who are insecure. Yeah. Yeah. And I've had relatives, relatives who I cared for. And it's in the book. I talk about them in speeches. I don't necessarily give them titles or mention their names, but you know, they, they wanted to see me fail. And I never understood why it isn't like I was, I looked up to them. I never, you know, uh, I wanted to make my dreams come true for my mom and dad and, and for me and now my wife and daughter. Um, but, and I make mistakes. I make a hell of a lot of mistakes, trust me. But I don't think anybody can say that I shunned them or I thought I was better than them unless they asked for it. Unless, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. And I'm sorry I'm talking so much, but if somebody says to me, well, Claudio, you've done X, Y, and Z, you know, you've done this. Oh, thank you. And I'm not doing Joe humble either. I, I appreciate it. Now, if somebody like this one guy one time said to me, he goes, eh, you haven't done all that much. I said, oh, okay. Then I went on and I rattled a bunch of things that I did. Okay. But again, you, you, you put them uh, in perspective. That's right. Hey, Dax, it's good to see you, man, up there in Canada. Uh haven't haven't talked to you or seen you for a long time. It's it's good to have you on with us tonight, uh, Claudio. Let's let let's see if we can we can do this. Uh, if I can do this thing without blowing it up, uh, and and we'll we'll get this book thing going. Time just flying by. Sure is. Uh, let me get this here. Well, let me go back to here. When I go down here. Okay, that's what I want to do. I want to share the screen. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Man, if I ain't a mess, huh? Uh, okay. You're doing better than I could do, I tell you that. My daughter had to get me on here. Mumbling and stumbling and <laughs> splitting and splurting and and. Uh, it's all right. Uh, all right. If you haven't already. And we're going to do this real quick. Enter in the comment. Hashtag book. Hashtag book. We'll give you a few seconds to, uh, if you haven't got it in there yet, to get it in there. And then we're going to we're gonna spin the gizmo. And uh, I think Espinlob's got it right. Because, man, uh, in the past, I've blown it up a few times. Had to crank her up, start it all over again. But, uh, hey, you know what I mean? We're live, so uh, and besides that, we have fun. That's what that's all that counts. So that's right. All right, hashtag book, hashtag book. All right, I'm gonna go up here, and I'm going to um, hit this, and don't have a drum roll, but <laughs> that ain't a sorry drum roll. Uh, let's hit it and see what happens. I like that. Isn't that cool? Ah, Jamie. Jamie from Altoona. Up, uh, right up the road. Not too far from me here in Pittsburgh. Not too far, Claudio. Yes, not sir. Too, uh, all right. Let me let me get this off here. All right, Jamie. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up here. Uh can we go back over here? Send, send me an address and I will sign a book and send it and, and uh, send it to Jamie. If that's, if that's the way you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Send your, your uh, name and address, Jamie, to that email right there. Rosano 16 at msn.com. <clears throat> and Claudio will sign the book and get her out to you over there in Altoona. So yes, I will. <clears throat> Claudio, man, it's been a blast. Went quick. No, it, it, you know, every time we get together, it goes fast. It does. It every does. time. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have Claudio come back, and we're going to do a whole show on uh, his his uh, his scouting and the company that he scouts, you know, he, he does and start – what are you, the vice pre president? General manager. 
of the okay. Global Scouting Bureau. James Gamble, great guy, uh, gave me the opportunity of a lifetime. I've been, with, I've been with James and the Scouting Bureau for 22 years. Okay, so we're going to do a whole show on that. All right. Then we're going to have him come back again, and we're going to do a whole show on boxing. You know, he, he mentioned a lot of boxers, Boo Boo <laughs> Mancini. Uh, uh, man, it goes on and on and on and on. So uh, we're going to do a whole show on boxing, and we're going to get him to come back. We never did get into these new rules about baseball and all that good stuff. We're going to get him to come back again. Uh, maybe that's that spared us an ulcer or something, Claudio. You know, I think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. But we're going to get him to come back. We're going to talk about some baseball. And then, hopefully, if what did the guys say, if the, if the cricks don't rise and, right. and uh, you don't eat too much chocolate or whatever, you know, I, I tear that thing up. I like chocolate. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, come the nice weather. Uh, you know, in hometown is Altoona. Uh, Claudio, I want to, I want to, uh, when it gets nice, I want to come down to, up down to, get some Texas hot dogs uh, in Altoona, and then scoot to Pittsburgh. Because I, I, I want to do a show with you and I right there together. You know what I'm I, saying? Yeah. I got this weekend. Uh, there's a studio I do the boxing show at. There's a, I do a studio at Rob Morris University. That's where I do the uh, Italian Impact. We have we can do it here wherever you want. It'll be great. It'll be fun. Alrighty, alrighty. So we'll we'll look forward to that. So you're going to see a lot of Claudio, uh, and he's going to see a lot of us. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends, Romans and countrymen, thank you for being with us tonight. Whether you were down the street, around the corner, across America, somewhere around this great big world, push this out there so more and more people can see it. Claudio, I love you, brother. Love you, George. You are the best. I love doing this interview, and and truly, I appreciate you more than I can say, and I appreciate your uh, wife and your wonderful fans. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much. And all give right. our love to your wife, to your daughter, and to I the whole for gang sure. in Pittsburgh. You got it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's see. We came in here, uh, if I find the right button here. We came in here jamming. We're going out of here jamming. Uh, we're going to do it like this. Good night, everybody. Good night.